Good morning and welcome to Chesapeake Technology Incorporated's training video on how to adjust layback in your SonarWiz 6 project. For years we've had a nice set of example data, which is MST marine sonic data, converted from MST format to XTF on our website, on the support site, www.chesstechsupport.com. I want to thank the contributor of this. It was uh, Chris Jensen of the North Carolina Department of Fisheries, where they have all sorts of uh, play areas set up for fish, for fish habitat restoral off the coast of North Carolina. So this is UTM 18 North is the zone where our project will be today. And we'll use that data. It's a, a small set of uh, adjacent XTF lines that were recorded in counter direction so that if you don't add layback and your towfish was behind the boat, they're not going to line up very well. And this is a very common technique that you would use. Uh, in this case, Chris uh, didn't do the survey himself. Someone else did it. He didn't have the information about how much cable out was required at the time of the survey. So he just used uh, iteration and adjustment and uh, added cable out to see how much data it took how much cable out to make these uh, fish habitat sections. In this case, it was a, a sunken wreck. You know, it's one of these great ways we get rid of uh, old, old bit ships, you know, we just take them out and, and dump them in the ocean and it, it turns into a fish habitat. So it's, it's very helpful for both parties. And we're actually restoring a lot of fish habitat like that, especially off the course of uh, Carolina, Carolina. So here is our example uh, section uh, demonstration graphic where we've got a GPS antenna which is likely to be above the captain's cabin in the center of your boat and the whole fish in this case is going down at approximately a 45 degree angle. Let's say that's a hundred meters and you know from uh, your high school trigonometry you've got an X and a Y and the hypotenuse is really the, uh, the direction that you're looking at. That would be a hundred meters but it's not actually a hundred meters be be behind the boat. So you're going to want the X coordinate. How far back does it go? And you've got to approximate this. So if you actually have 100 meters and your cable out was 100 meters, maybe you go with uh, 80 meters for the cable out that you put into your, your data on SonarWiz to compute the towfish position difference from the GPS antenna. There are really two positions that you might incorporate. One is called sheave offset. Uh, we'll call this the sheave. Usually you have some kind of a, a cable mechanism, maybe a cable meter if you're lucky, to measure how far back the cable went. And you take a sheave position, uh, you can put X, Y, and Z to describe where your sheave is with respect to your GPS antenna. And then you add the cable out. And these two combine to provide what offset you give between the GPS antenna position, which is where your navigation data would be, to the towfish position. And doing this you can get a really exact measurement of where your towfish is. I'm going to close this graphic for a moment and help you with reference information. I want to describe uh, four different sources of information that you can use to get layback information. It's a very easy topic to learn, uh, but we have four different ways for you to learn that. I'm going to open SonarWiz. It's already running, so I'll click down here. And I'm going to open up the user manual, and I'll type in a control F for find, and I'll enter layback. And it's a sort of a complicated topic, so there's a large section in SonarWiz. And you can see for data acquisition, you can set up cable and layback before you record your data, so it records into your files. And I'll click again here. That gave me playback. And then layback and offsets is an entire section 5.14 in uh, the Sonar Was User Guide. If you have not recorded layback into your file, that's okay. You can add it and adjust entirely in post processing if you need to. And there are a couple of ways to do that. Uh, one is to manually put in the data. If you happen to have really carefully recorded survey notes, you might want to create uh, like an Excel spreadsheet with uh, times 
and dates and cable up values and you could inject your file if it's, if it's the right type we can inject about five different kinds of files in SonarWiz with the Navinjector Pro software, the subject of a different video. But you can put layback right into your Sonar data. You can either put it in the raw Sonar file, or you can add it to the CSF file that's the imported format within SonarWiz of your Sonar data. So there are so many different ways. I just want to give you hope that there's really no way you can record a survey and not be able to adjust the layback afterwards. So I'm going to close that out. That was the first reference. The second reference I want to point out is on the main website. The uh, support site has SonarWiz and technical notes section. And in there you can find a layback and cable out tutorial PDF that has incredible detail about examples and how to accommodate various uh, types of uh, cable out and layback information into your survey. The example we're using today is XTF data, and I'll just click on that because it's a special option in SonarWiz. Uh, SonarWiz has the option for different types of files to specify where does the cable on value come from. We only do this when there's an option, and various vendors do it different ways. In XTF recording, we have at least two different places that the file format allows you to put cable out data. You can put it in what they call the cable out or the layback value. Well, we've seen it both ways and really have no control over that. So when you need an option to control it and make a choice like that, SonarWiz gives it to you. In this case, we will try the cable out value first in the XTF header and see if cable out was recorded uh, in, from the uh, survey. And if it wasn't, we could select uh, layback in this uh, file type specific option and import the file that way and if we still don't find it then we're going to have to do it by iteration but in many surveys in your case you typically would have layback either recorded in through the sonar recording or cable meter information coming in at the same time as the survey it's just not common practice to ignore it completely and not record the data if you have cable out all right so that's the second source uh, the third source of information I want to share is uh, on the uh, main website, the support website. This, this data, this XCF data, is up there as a uh, zip file, and along with it is a PDF explaining in specific detail for these two files how to find the uh, layback information in your XTF and how to, how to use it to adjust your data. So if none of that helps you enough, in addition to that, you have this video to play with and read and, and listen to. But you can always send us an email. Send it to support at chesapeaketech.com. And we'd like to uh, hear from you and get a, an example of your data, your MML file, and your sonar data. And we'll help you find the layback information if it's there. So that we're like a last resort. You know, we're in different time zones. We might not be available exactly when you need this information. Please try to find the information in the available references that are 24-7. But if you need help, give us a jingle and we'll try to work it out. Okay, this uh, project we've set up here, I'm going to show you from the Create Project. It's located off the North Carolina coast and we have a previous video showing how to create projects. Uh, this one came in with a get from file giving us the exact position and it automatically chooses UTM-80 for 18 North. We're not going to have to change that at all. And I'll show you the two sonar lines that we've imported. One of them is bold in the Project Explorer, so it has been bottom tracked. That was done by Travis earlier. And we're going to take a look at that and see what values were used. It took a little bit of, of doing. We had to replace, remove, and insert some points to get over some small spikes. But generally, the values we're using were 14 meter blanking and duration of four, so four points in a row, 14 meters away from the center line. And then we looked for a brightness threshold of 45. And this came up really, really pretty good. So we saved that. And now we're going to bottom track the second file now and make it look like it has some good data in there. Again, we'll use 14, 4, and 45 and click track it. It looks fairly good, and we're going to use manual tracking here to remove a few spikes. And then we will 
we'll smooth out the bottom tracking. I'm going to do port first. And we'll click on insert. Put back some tracking information that looks pretty good. All right, I'm going to save this. I'm going to go back and go and do the second one. We'll do the starboard side next. That looks really good. See what happens when I go starboard. I'm not sure what that is. There's some kind of a bubble in the data, but I'm going to re remove that. Remove the little spikes we've got. I'll try to insert again. And we'll go down to the real bottom. That looks pretty good. I'm going to scroll. The rest of it looks really good. I'll save it and see what it looks like. Okay, so we have two bottom tracked XTF files that have been imported into CSF files. We want to adjust the way back because this is one boat, right? It didn't take two pictures of two boats nearby. These should line up fairly close. So what we're going to do is use our measurement tool and find that little measurement tape and see what I got here. So it's approximately 15 meters, 30 meters, divided by 2. The arrows here, the red and the green arrows, <coughs> excuse me, show that this line was created recording in that direction. And we'll look at the other one. So they're counter-directional. So if we adjust layback here by 15 meters, it's going to move this back 15 meters. And this one will move back 15 meters. So let's try that. All right, suppose you didn't have your survey information, you're just going to have to guess that's a perfect way to do it. You go through some kind of a reference object and measure the distance in a pair of counter directional lines adjacent, and then divide it in half. So here's how we'll do that. We're going to go to Post Processing, File Manager. We're going to squeeze this down a little bit and use our cable back Cable percentage will be our formula. We don't have a depth sensor. We could have used that. We're going to say no layback. We're going to say 100% because I know the number I want and I don't want it being divided by 80% uh, or something like that. Okay, so let's see. The next thing I want to go to is set the cable out. I'm going to try 15 meters per line. And I'll use it for both lines, and we'll just say, okay, and nothing changed, okay, you're wondering, okay, what the heck are they doing there, nothing changed, <laughs> let's refresh the screen, one of these icons is a screen refresh, I forget which one now, all right, so this adjustment didn't work great, I've still got 15 meters, Maybe I will add another 7 meters, so we'll make it 22. So let's try that. Go to File Manager, set cable out. I want to set it to 22 meters. Okay, try that and refresh the screen. It's getting really close. I can't see exactly how much it is though. Uh, the offset is not quite right. Let's see if there's another way to refresh the screen and make it look better. Let's see. Redraw now. There we go. Alright, so we're getting closer. This is the general idea. Just with your visual discrimination, you decide if you have got it close enough. And I think another 3 meters might do it. I'll try 25. And I'll go back to set cable out and say 25 and see how that works and I'll redraw there's my redraw icon there we go oh, I'm getting really 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 close it's hard to tell yeah we're, we're in the range I'll, I'll deselect that one 
so this is the idea you just get your your images to line up now if I had known that instead of 25 meters that the value uh, I was using incorporated a sheave offset when I do properties right now I can see that the cable out range is 25 so I've set everything for 25 let's turn that around we're gonna take five meters off of that and see what happens I'll go to cable out and set it to 20 and see what we get okay so now we're back to having a slight adjustment what we're gonna do is add that in as sheave offset now these, uh, these numbers all add together when you're creating your, your position of the toadfish with respect to GPS antenna so if you know that you've got a sheave offset uh, we're going to do that let's see what's the best way to do that I think there's a uh, uh, sheave offset dialog and we have a, a dialog description and I think a picture in here in this PDF exactly if we have a nice diagram you know what the diagram that's really nicest for this is in the user guide so I'm going to pull that out for just a moment and see if I can find that we'll go to help and user manual and let's see if we can find sheave offset the sheave is a technical term for that, that beam up behind your boat where you've got the cable coming out. And let's see what we got here. Okay, so this is the dialogue and the description and it's uh, X position, Y position, and Z position. I don't really care about the Z position in this, this case, but X and Y are very important. Like if your sheave was off to one side of the boat, you're going to want to adjust X and Y. Uh, X is the left-right position. Y it's going to be a positive value, I believe, for uh, adding behind the boat. So let's say we have 5 meters for Y and 20 meters for cable out. Let's see how that works. All right, so I'm going to try to adjust this. and I'll go back to filter and file manager and the sheave offset. I'm going to put in 5 for Y value for both lines. Well, I'm going to say apply sheave offset. And let's try that. Oh, what do we got here now? Did I go in the wrong direction? I think I went in the wrong direction. I think I have to do minus y, my, uh, minus five. So you know, I don't do this myself every day, and sometimes I make a mistake. Great. So we've we've definitely misadjusted here, and I'm going to go in the opposite direction now. So I'll pull up the file manager again, and we'll go down to minus five. And see how that yeah, let's make it minus six and see how that looks and you know that looks really good so now you got two numbers here you can measure your sheave offset you know that you could call up the guys on the boat and say what's the sheave offset and then you could add in what you think was an approximation for cable out and this should be good for the entire survey you might in fact you can and you might want to do this adjust separately for uh, with the current and against the current because the angle of the towfish might be slightly different you're going with the with the current the uh, towfish might be higher in the water and not sinking not sinking as much and you might have a slightly different value so you can adjust this cable out per line in your entire survey it's certainly easier of course if you have a, a cable meter but if you need to, you can adjust individually. So thanks for watching this uh, CTI training video on how to adjust layback. You've got lots of references and consider us your backup team. We can always help you out on individual files if you want to send them in to us. Thanks for watching.